All right, welcome to the June 25th, 2024 Aries Cloud Agent Python user group community meeting. Um, PRs and issues, um, LTS handling, and some questions from Animo uh, Anonymy Labs, sorry, um, are on the list. Um, so, and we can add other topics as people see fit. Um, reminder, we're recording this call and the recording will be posted on this page. Um, as well, uh, this is a Linux Foundation, Hyperledger Foundation meeting. So the Linux Foundation antitrust policy is in effect, as is the Hyperledger Foundation Code of Conduct. For those not aware, Hyperledger posted a uh, Linux Foundation notice of intent to start the Linux Foundation decentralized trust organization. And so um, you might want to check into that and see how Hyperledger is evolving. I'll, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen with the branding and the names and all that, but the decentralized trust, LF decentralized trust is happening. Uh, that announcement came out today. Um, I did post um, <clears throat> a link to the uh, agenda. So feel free to add your name to the list of attendees. Welcome to all. Is anyone um, there wants to uh, introduce themselves and um, talk about what their project is that brings them to this meeting? I, think I recognize most folks. All right. Um. <clears throat> Agenda, any other announcements from anyone or uh, suggestions for the agenda? The agenda's here. All right. I have been away for a number of weeks and just getting back into it. So I'm going to be learning a bunch here. So um, bear with me as we go through this. So let's start with open PRs. Um, that wasn't expected, so let me do that this way. Um, also, I want to change to edit mode as I add things. Um, <clears throat> looks like um, we don't, other than the dependabot ones, everything else is in draft except pagination. and the DIDCOM v2 initial implementation. Interested in both of those things. Um, let's start with um, the pagination. Uh, does anyone have an update on where that is? Been looking at it? No, it was in draft until super recently. Okay. This obviously would be super helpful in something like traction and the way the where it is. Um, these particular ones, connection especially, would obviously be a huge um, help for um, being able to do uh, being able to use that in traction. Not sure how you know we've been getting away without it for a while, but that's that's the type of thing that would be very interesting in a in a uh, for a, a user interface obviously um the other one is um didcom v2 where do we where are we looking with that implementation are we close to being able to merge it i i know the idea was to merge it as a as a partial uh partially completed and then finishing it um yeah, so we're we're still in a uh, more or less that state when it comes to features. Um, we're just trying to get some uh, quick unit test coverage in, uh, so that okay. Sonar Cloud is is happy and we don't have to override any checks. Um, right. Okay. I think so, that was the last of it. Right. It's like it's seventy nine percent or something. I think the the test coverage on new code is pretty low. Oh. Oh. Um, right. And then Sonar Cloud wants eighty percent yeah. coverage. So yeah, um, so yeah, we're we're working on some some unit tests on the new code. Uh, we, we've tested it all, you know, manually. Yes. Uh, but we're, yeah, we're confident in it. But but yeah, just to get the the checks happy. Okay. Um. 
And then we've got a set of these. Um, they stopped working recently, and I couldn't exactly figure uh, okay. the sink, sink or snake or however you say it, checks stopped working, but it wasn't reporting a security thing. It was, I'm not exactly sure why it was. Okay. Stop working. Excellent. Just for fun, I'll merge this one and um, update it, and then we'll see. Um, it said the integration test failed on that one. They still fail super occasionally. They pass okay. most of the time, but... Okay. There's still... Oh, look. Is this the one that was failing? Yeah, so maybe it's just fixed itself. Oh, good. Doesn't that sound fun? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we'll see how that one goes. Um, can these just be merged once they pass tests? For the most part, I think so. Um, some like especially the minor ones and yeah. patch releases, but sometimes they there's like sometimes it's catching stuff that upgrades really far, and then you have to actually as long as they can pass the test, I think they should be. Yeah. Good. As I look, these are all unrelated to production code, right? These are development ones. Rough is is for testing. I don't know about Portal Locker. It was doing stuff with the demo, and for some reason it was doing some major upgrades with demo stuff that we couldn't merge. But for the most part, I think almost all of them we've been able to merge. OK. okay. All right. <clears throat> um, as far as issues go, um, any of these new ones that were opened? I know Ian's. We don't need to worry about. He's he's working those separately. Those are W three C related. Um, Jamie, this one. There's a draft PR. Okay. Good. Basically, the holder wasn't right. Cool. Hadn't been transferred to use the new. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, this one looks like a, a bottomless pit. Um, is there? He's got two potential cases in here. Is that what we should focus on, or we just leave this one for? Yes, we need to do this. Um, I don't know if anyone else wants to talk about it, but I think there's some legacy stuff like with that, the top one that he mentioned. Yeah. I think there is possibly stuff with that. The yeah. other one wasn't related to this problem, but I think it's more about doing it correctly, moving forward with the non-creds code. And if you happen to discover something with the legacy code that we think should be fixed than to fix it but i don't think anyone has like exact knowledge yeah. of places there's no way we're going to globally fix this with a magic no it's method and i think it's been done way better with the non-creds code yeah. using transactions properly and fail yeah. cases but yeah okay um this one is going progressing are we is this close to closing i know there was lots there's been lots of conversation about it uh i have a draft pr open um it was a very simple fix to adjust the the default did that gets sent back when receiving a did peer one from credo yeah um i just need to go through and do a little bit more uh, um evaluation to make sure that this fixes the problem um, okay. between Credo and, and Actify. Um, so th that shouldn't take me long. I just got to sit down and do it. Okay. Good. Any other, <clears throat> excuse me, any other issues we want to highlight?
<clears throat> no. All right. Um, this is the big one <clears throat> I did want to bring up. Um, Pradeep, thanks for, for doing this. I think this is yours. Yeah. Um, really like this one. So those who haven't seen it yet. Um, so two big things here. Um, defining an LTS strategy and committing to 12 and 11, one as LTS. Um, go ahead, Pradeep, why don't you talk through this? Yeah, so this uh, LTS versions, I've just put it as a, uh, like a like initial draft. So that's why I've not even um, made it ready yet. So I just wanted to discuss with uh, maintainers and also the community in uh, which version we can choose as LTS, either 0 0.11, 0 0.12, uh, so we can have a discussion and then add it here. Um, so what uh, basically happens is that uh, when we go to the readme, um, so we'll have a list of uh, images which are there as marked as LTS. So uh, anyone who wants to try out uh, Akapai can choose uh, which LTS version they're going to use. And uh, this LTS versions are going to be supported with security releases, uh, I mean, security patches. So whatever uh, vulnerabilities we are finding with uh, Snyke or the dependent bots, so they are going to go into these uh, patches. And then the other versions which we are releasing, so those are going to be minor releases and they are not going to be marked as LTS. So that is uh, um, summarized here in this uh, LTS strategy. So I've just used the same format which the Fabric, uh, Hyperledger Fabric uh, strategy has. Uh, just renamed um, the versions and then made it to suit our uh, Akapai, the civil repository here. So that is uh, the quick summary. So uh, if anyone wants to take a, a detailed look and they can look into this. And in addition to this, I'm also uh, doing other, uh, uh, like in the LTS PR conversation, if you go to the conversation tab. Yeah. Um... No, that itself view, yeah, on the yeah, top. Got it. Yeah. Not the so, issue. Uh, yeah, the first one is release uh, section and then the LTS strategy document. So third and fourth, which I'm working on is that um, uh, Snipe container okay. image. So whichever version we are marking as uh, uh, LTS, so that uh, we can mark uh, okay. planning got to be it. monitored. So what will happen is uh, instead of doing the scan, once this monitor will change and uh, do it every day or uh, we can set that up in the snack settings so that will continuously keep monitoring it and then if there is any vulnerability reported it's going to report it back to that um, section the security section where uh, maintainers have access to and um, the last one is the supported features so whichever features are supported in each lts so that can be indicated so we have a document for supported features list so that document can be updated for each version. Uh, these are the features which are supported. So that's the plan, uh, rough plan, which I have. So um, open to comments and any. Um, let's start with Patrick. Uh, yeah, to comment, I think this is good. I like that it's at the, the beginning of the readme and it should help a lot when people, uh, you know, want either advice or the, they face issues. Uh, we can quickly identify which version they're using. Uh, there's been a few times people find guides that use older version and things aren't exactly quite the same. So now like having this properly documented is great. One my question, uh, the version pin was 0 0.12.0. Am I wrong in assuming that 0 0.1 had a few fixed issues that was in 12.0? Um, well, we have to nail down exactly what we would do there. So I think that's open to discussion exactly what we do. Right. So yeah. But, but yeah, my comment was just for the first one to put like. Yeah, I'm pretty more, sure but, we wouldn't yeah. use. Yeah, pretty sure we wouldn't use. Um, Point zero. We would use the latest. Yeah. Yeah. So. Cool. So the reason behind that one was so twelve point one is the latest one, right? So um, we should always have a LTS one version be behind the latest, so that that one is tested. And the new one uh, after it's released, so we can have some PDF mm -hmm. and then we can mark it as LTS. 
Yeah, my 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 only point was like twelve points. Like we know there was a bug fix. Mm -hmm. Like there there was something not working in twelve point zero. So I don't know whether that's should be considered uh you know considered or not in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, well, yeah. I guess like we might find more bugs in twelve point one, but uh, we know for sure there was one point zero. So yeah. That's um, great. I like it. Okay, so I had a couple of questions that I didn't quite understand. Um, the the release numbering. Um, if we pin it to you know zero eleven one is LTS. How? What is the numbering when we do patch updates? Normally, that would become eleven two, eleven three, eleven four. Is that still the plan? I'm, I I didn't quite understand that that part of it. Yeah, I think we should um, keep the third digit as patches and then just um, give the LTS as uh, the second okay. digit. Point one one should yeah. be the yeah point one one and point one two. The third digit we should leave it open. Right. So the 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 these two should be zero twelve and zero eleven. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there should be an automatic way in which we are taking the latest one from that third digit. So I'll try to see if I can make that happen. Okay. Yeah. okay. That makes sense. Um, do we, should we in the <clears throat> readme have the end date of the LTS or how does that work? Like, You'd think we would have an end date on at least eleven one, if not on twelve. Would that be appropriate? Exactly. So that is defined in the strategy there. So okay. the major version, whenever we are releasing it, we should support it for nine months. So that's the usual time okay. frame which releases uh, um, are supported. So uh, whenever we do the release, we can also mark saying that uh, this is point one two. This is going to be supported until this date. So that can be reflected in the README. So um, whenever we are doing a release, so we should manage saying that this is a version April 11th. So yeah. it's going to be supported until nine months after that, right? So end That's of the 11. 11 is supported for nine months after that. 12 is undefined until the next major, minor or major. All right, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So that's yeah. like we, we need to update. Right. Yeah. And I couldn't find that <clears throat> in scanning this. So <laughs> the, oh yeah, there it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry about the throat. Okay. Um, and then this question is answered by the the uh, SNCC Correct. Um, yeah. strategy you had. Correct. So SNCC monitor uh, will make sure that, um, uh, but again, um, how are we going to make sure that only the dependabot or the security updates are to be merged when this release? So that has to be done manually. So we can... Um, we need yes. to have some kind of a patch branch uh, for that one, that and then one. merge that uh, patches to that branch, and um, only that branch has to be released. Uh, so okay. we should, uh, yeah, I'll write up uh, something in the strategy for this. Wow, is my happening very slowly? I tried to hit con uh, conversation there. <laughs> okay. And, and my big thing there was the thousands of dependabots. But now that I see you're using a different approach, you're scanning the container, um, that's that's what we're looking for. So that's great. Correct, yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, any other questions there? Thanks for that work. That's great. And it sounds right. I will add some additional updates in here after the call sounds good thank you okay um these questions came up from john court of anonymy labs um, he sent them to me directly uh yesterday and i thought 
these are actually good questions. I don't have great answers. He should have put an issue in, um, but I'm not close enough to answer these questions. So I thought I would crowdsource the answers and probably put this in as an issue with the answers. Um, This is this is supported and available. So that's just a, it's available. It's a plugin, right? Uh, Universal Resolver support is actually directly built in that client. Okay. Yeah, we it used to be a plugin. Uh, we merged it into okay. main uh, some time ago now. Actually, I think it's been in there for. Okay, I can I can look at that up. Okay. Um. Second question, do we, at this point, we don't have any other implementations than legacy indie, is that correct? I believe that's correct. Okay. And a thumbs up from Jamie, so yeah, yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're, we're basically waiting for a concrete use case or project or something that wanted to use something else before. Okay. And those are the ones that I would expect would be the next concrete use cases. Okay. I have a feeling we're gonna find pretty quickly a way to do did TDW, so. I would say that's going to be a thing. <clears throat> Everyone familiar with did TDW? I'm not. I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. I'm going to do a presentation one of these days uh, for the group, so I'll I'll fill you in. But basically, it's a much better did web um, that's relatively easy to implement. It's a self lettering did web. There you go. It rings a bell. Um, lots of uh, discussions this week on the W3C public did working group mailing list about did TDW. So there you go. I'm writing emails about it. Um, Answer to this one. Again, Daniel, I'm probably looking at you as having the most likely. Uh, this one is an interesting question. Because um, uh, I've actually attempted to do like a generic did registration interface for Akapai. Yeah. Um, and I've had like two false starts on it in the past okay. already. Um, and the, the kind of, I guess the conclusion I've come to after attempting it twice is that I find little value in having a universal interface for did registration um, because the requirements and, and the process of creating a did can vary so widely. Um, I find it much more useful, much more usable to just have plugins provide that functionality. Um, and then it can do it in whatever bespoke way is required for that particular did method. Um, so yeah, there there is like a universal registrar um, like document uh, that uh, um, Marcus Sabadell put together. And, and yeah. I believe he's been, like, I think he's implemented something that he calls a universal registrar. Um, but in the context of Akapai, like, I, I just don't know that the, the concept really maps onto Akapai. Most yeah. of the concerns that are addressed, m most of like the, the technical challenge that's addressed by the universal registration is where do the secrets live? And yeah. when we're talking about Akapai, uh, where the secrets live is already well established. It's going to live inside of our wallet. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's better to just have it be implemented as plugins. Yeah. That's that's kind of where I'm at on the question of did registrar. And at the moment, we don't have a plugin that implements that, right? Uh, that implements a creating dids. Yeah, creating a registrar. Like, like how? 
how does it get done? Yeah. We, we really don't have an instance of it. Same as basically same as this, which is when we do did TDW, we're probably going to have to do the same thing. Right. Um, so I, I've I've played around with um, like toy implementations of quote unquote did registration as plugins within Akapai. Yeah. Um, mostly to just have something quick and easy to put together. Um, yeah. Did web, I think, is a good example of this. Uh, okay. And basically all I've done in those plugins is just to provide an admin API endpoint for creating a did or for registering a did. A did. And so yeah. we already have like all the infrastructure we need in the context of we can produce admin API endpoints from plugins and we have access to the wallet so we can store those dids in the wallet. Um, I think the big piece that's missing in terms of supporting a wider variety of did methods is uh, some of the stuff that Patrick has been addressing with um, like being able to use a verification method ID to sign a JSON LD credential and, and stuff like that. And I see Patrick's mm -hmm. hand is up. So maybe I'll yeah. go ahead and toss it over to him to see if he has something yeah. out there. Go yeah, I, th I think it's interesting. Like I, I got to play a bit with the GoDiddy solution lately, which you know lets you create dids anywhere you want, modify the did documents, issue credential and so on. And it's, it's great, but that's like a, a product in its own. Like for registering dids, I see, like three core categories of did, right? There's like something like did key, did peer, did JWK, which is like sort of a self-contained did, like you create the did document from the did itself. Uh, the other one is like did web and did TDW, where you actually just host a did document on the internet somewhere um on the on the website and then there's like ledger based did where you send a transaction to a ledger so like those are the three categories that i see as like quite different how it, it operates so if akapai was to want the users to register a did web uh, it would probably need to include the, this interface to serve this did document unless there's like a, a, a did existing did web service that Akapai taps into but that's it's it's kind of a weird one same for uh, tdw for yeah. for different blockchains um you know you want to send a transaction to an existing ledger um so yeah and it, it's obviously going to vary for each one of them like uh, you know, ND VDR can interact with the ND ledger, but I don't know. Can, can I get by write a did on a ledger? No, you need to yeah. write it. I mean, <clears throat> ND VDR yeah. does it. So it invokes ND VDR for did or for ND. And yeah. 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 So I'm kind of agreeing that I think plugin kind of makes sense. Uh, yeah. Because what the idea behind a, a uni registrar is like you would have an endpoint that you give the did method and the, the did you want to write and then that endpoint can connect to anything is that the idea behind a universal register yeah 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 i think seems like so far plugins make sense and i'm not sure like realistically how many how many different did methods do we want to really support with ICAP? I guess it will come by community needs, right? Like has people exactly, need... which is which is why plugins are are the way to go to me. Um, yeah, that that by uh, you can have whatever plugin you want, and uh, those can be shared so that you know we can have a single implementation. But chances are, any Akapai instance is probably only going to implement one. Yeah, and I'm just curious, curious like possible that a you know a, a, a multi-tenant might might support multiple, but that's mm -hmm. I think since um, by definition the instance would uh, you know would be run by a single entity, it chances are it would use a single method, but who knows? But but a that's plugin wouldn't as a plugin means that we're not tied to Akapai releases either. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing that could be, I think, well, you know, just my impression, it could be maybe a bit more documentation on the Akapai side. Um, yes. So you, you have the base image and you want to enable a plugin like that. Documentation yeah. seems to live in the Akapai plugin repository. 
yeah. I think there could be maybe a quick recipe, like, uh, you know, an example Docker file to just, you know, build from the base Akapai image, you just activate, you know, a quick and easy way to choose and pick the, the plugins you want. Um, and, you know, I, I also think these plugins should live in some official place, right? Like all these different plugins. So maybe there could be like a, I don't well, know. Well, we have an official place. That is the- Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So, I mean, like as more uh, did writing plugins get made, they should live there, you know, probably and not like, left and right different places yeah. Uh, yeah oh no that's i mean or we yeah, should encourage like, people you know because someone my might plugins should be the place yeah we should encourage like as people make their plugins you know well don't try to bring it over here if they yes. want to i mean it can can force people to but yeah that said we're living independent about hell with aries by plugins i've got it better good yeah there is also an awful lot got dealt with yesterday yeah if you leave it for too long there's a lot but yeah it's we do have tools to manage it and it's going okay um i'm just gonna say there's we did talk about it like uh once before where it might we might be able to do something within akapai so if you install a plugin like with poetry or pip uh, from the actual repo, because we're kind of tagging the plugins, you might just be able to install install it with your, and that's it. You don't have to configure yeah. the plugin or anything. So you just install it once with your build and then it works. So there's work that we have to do with that, but it, I think that would be, good because it would just take all the complexity about configurations and stuff out of it yeah by the way jamie i was gonna say um dependabot will i i noticed all your manually closing issues but dependabot will close them all automatically once they get upgraded it does sometimes and then sometimes it seems like uh, it doesn't okay. so yeah i was gonna suggest you give it a chance to try and then see what happens but it I mean, did nothing. close a bunch and it didn't close a bunch. So uh, okay. Got I'm going to see what happens when it's all cleaned up. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I've seen it where you, if you make a commit with all of the things in it and get that merged in, depend if it will notice and close everything, but other times it won't. Nice. That's useful. Okay. All right, good answers. Thank you. That's excellent. And then finally, I, the tail server, as far as I know, is not indie dependent. It's called indie tail server, but it actually probably should be a non creds tail server. And right. and it's got nothing to do with. The only thing indie about it is the Akapai connection with indie and the ledger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, when we were working on the initial non-creds um, ledger agnostic interfaces, um, we uh, we updated the Tails server implementation to um, to yeah. work outside of the context of Indy. Um, exactly. So where there might be some confusion is that we left the the original endpoints that did operate specifically on Indy. We left those in as okay. a backwards compatibility yeah. um, thing. Um, so the default endpoints, the the old indie endpoints, will actually look on the ledger to make sure that yeah. there's like a corresponding cred def and stuff um, associated with the inbound revocation registry that it's a uh, or rather tails file that it's serving, um, and the new endpoints rather than calling out to a ledger anywhere, um, it just does some basic verification and making makes sure that the tails file is generally the correct shape and yeah. um, that the hashes match and all that stuff. So it's, uh, we basically eliminated a lot of um, deeper validation that was going on in an indie context. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it should support non indie based and on creds implementations through those new interfaces, through the new endpoints that is. Yeah. So I have, I have a question about this. Okay. Um, this is effectively just a file server at this point, right? Yes. 
So well, it's we, not we talk. I mean, it does only allow you to post tail servers, and that's the verifications we're talking about here. But other than that, it's just a a, a file server with some specific endpoints for yeah. reading and writing. Because I'm wondering, I'm just wondering, especially with things like status files for other credential formats, whether mm. you want to make this more generalized. Because if it's simply just a file server, then could we host other types of uh, revocation lists? And that could expand then the the types of credentials that we can revoke on Akamai. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you put a bit string status list instead of? Okay. What's it? Is that the official name? Yeah, bit string status list. Uh, no date. Okay. Thank you. Like that? Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, but yeah, okay. I think like in all seriousness, it could. I think it could just accept any any of them, but uh, I kind of like the idea. Um, well, the idea is that um, it's the verification it, that's needed, so it doesn't become an arbitrary, you know, post anything yeah. there. So it it I think it does need to have endpoints that allow the posting of specific types of files, and that it sniff the file a bit and do some sort of verification. So I think that that is actually needed. My question is like, how does it prevent someone from overriding someone else's TELS file? Like that, there's no authorization on the tail server as far as I know. So Ooh, interesting. Does anyone yeah. know? <laughs> like, could um, I override someone's TELS file? I bet you could deploy it with, with a, but like in the current in the current state, right? There's a tail server, some agent posts on there. What prevents me from sniffing around and posting a new tails file on top of this? Like like it's what, just what... primarily like uh, reverse proxy access to those endpoints. That is the main check. And so you would you would expose it. So Akpi has the ability to write um, to the to the upload endpoints or whatever, but then the only public endpoints are the reads. Shouldn't it be only the issuer that is allowed to make but changes how, to that? How does Akapai write to it? Surely it's like a post request, no? Yeah, it's just a post or rather- well, Yeah, that, that, that's kind of the point being made is if those endpoints that Akapai writes to as an issuer are locked behind a a reverse proxy where only you know certain IPs or whatnot, uh, certain networks can talk to it. Then, when someone out from the public web tries to post those same endpoints, they get a you know four or four not found, but they'd still be able to retrieve the documents rather than post yeah. updates. And then right. So on top of that, the files are are named by hash as well. So the only way to and the, the hashes are validated against the contents of the file being posted. So you would only be able to post the exact same file that was previously posted to that that location. Um, at least that's how it works with the, the tails files right now. So all right, all right. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So it's it's you post the file only once and then you don't touch it anymore. Yep. So that that hashing wouldn't apply to the the bit string status list. No, because it would be updated frequency. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And yeah, and it's a it's a bit strange because the status list is actually a signed credential, right? And I think you want to sign it. Um, like if a verifier calls the tail server to get that credential, I, I guess you could post a signed VC on there and they just get yeah. it. Uh, yeah, uh, interesting Maybe. idea. I think should definitely think about it. Uh, yeah. 
So the the tail server would become more of a like a status service of some sort. like a revocation list service or something, but but yeah. I obviously don't want to make it too complicated. It starts it's worth doing some exploration. It yeah. yeah. Um one of the things that we're gonna be looking at related to did TDW is um there has been an implementation of a thing called the did web server with the idea of being you separate out your publishing of a did from your management of the did mm -hmm. um and again it is very similar a very similar concept right it's a a protected server on one side and then um and then open to the public on the other and obviously with uh and needs to have precise semantics as far as what exactly the HTTP endpoints are for for serving them. <laughs> so again, as we as we move down into did web and did TDW um, work, um, we're going to need those. We're going to need something like that implemented. And so the idea is to gather up some some requirements on how that will happen. Yeah, like I was always thinking like a plugin would make sense. Like you just serve the, the documents on the different ports, but you do the management on your admin interface. Yeah. Because all you need is one one port and people, you know, uh, access your divs. You need to retrieve them. Yeah. Yeah. You need yes. to retrieve them, serve them, be able to update yeah. them. But being able to update them, we want to avoid. <laughs> Well, I mean, world to do that. yeah, yeah, no, no, that endpoint, that port would only be for retrieval. The updating them would happen like on the admin side, right? Like if I want to add a, a ver key or add a service or so on. Okay. All right. Any other comments on those questions? Okay, next one is coming from, um, I'm gonna raise Gavin's issue here. Um, possible issue with the preserve exchange record. What do we got there? Yeah, so basically uh, the preserve exchange records for those who uh, don't know what it does, it's basically meant to ensure that Akapai keeps the presentation uh, requests and a few other things around before they're completed. Um, but once they're completed, it removes them. Uh, if you don't have that flag, and if you do have the flag, it'll keep them around. Um, and so something I noticed is that if you don't have that flag enabled, um, as far as I've been able to determine, there isn't really any way to actually complete a uh, proof request. Um, and so I looked around the instructions given in any of the docs that we have without this flag will no longer work. And the demo uses this flag to actually make it all function properly. So I'm not sure if anybody's run into this or has like a workaround, but as okay. of now, if and, you- and First yeah. of all, on which side? Yeah, so if you're if you're the verifier, um, then uh, you need this flag enabled. Really? For anything to work. Yeah. Uh, and I've, I've checked. And as far as I, I haven't been able to check, like, obviously, every project that's using Akapai. But uh, in the demo, which was the main thing I was testing against, I noticed that it had it enabled. Um, and same thing with ours. Oh, go ahead. Emiliano? <clears throat> yeah, just adding a little bit of flavor to what um, Gavin just said. We are in particular migrating from AAP1 to AAP2. So we're, in this case, we found it with VCO10, trying to move to present proof 2.0 protocol. Um, and what it seems to be happening is like the proof request completes. However, there's no way of fetching the data, like, you know, the, the requested attributes and whatever the data for the completed proof request is because the webhook comes back as a terse webhook. That's a change we did like a couple of years ago because they were the bodies ah. were getting too big. 
-hmm. and the record gets deleted i will say too quickly because i don't know how to explain it so you cannot fetch it from the admin api before it gets deleted yeah and I, you can like we, you can sometimes beat it to the punch but we definitely it's definitely not reliable and <laughs> yeah. not great yeah we we at least we haven't really had the problem with the AAP one protocol, but I'm not sure whether that's behaving differently to begin with. Example. So wondering, I guess, I don't know if there's anybody else on the call that uses the present proof 2.0 protocol that might speak for it, or we need to do some further investigation, but I think that's what well, the concern has, has found. The concern to me is the terse webhook. Yeah. That seems to me the issue. Yeah, I think that's I, I think it's the combination of those two things. That's yeah. That's the, yeah, the I think you've already found the problem. Um <laughs> the terse webhook definitely should not <laughs> should not be should should it has to give you enough information. It has to give you everything from that last event. So um yeah. I think that's that's what we need to look at. Okay. Can you get that posted, Gavin, as an issue? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I could type. It would be good. Okay. Interesting. That's scary. All right, um, getting to a default ARM friendly release. Is it all caps? Um, did we have we made any progress there? Is anyone chasing that issue? No. <laughs> okay. I was I was supposed to look into BBS plus stuff and a couple other Rust libraries, but I haven't really done a deep dive into it. Okay. So we did <clears throat> we did post to Matter uh, Global about one of their libraries and we haven't received any responses back. Okay. So I think at this point the question is is do we fork and maintain this on our own? Yeah. As part of yeah. Hyperledger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um Aki, can you shoot me a, a link to that issue? Yeah, sounds good. I'm sure I can find it, but. I'm like 95% confident. We've already talked about this before, but I'm having a, um, I'm having issues remembering what our, our conclusion was. But we we talked about potentially not including the BBS implementation for a while. Yes, that was another approach that we discussed. We did at a previous meeting. Um, I took out the notes. Um, because we didn't come to any conclusion. Yeah, I think there was some ideas thrown out about how to manage. Uh. Where, or where it should live if it's a core thing or a plugin or whatnot. Yeah. So do we still think, is this the path to doing it? There's a whole bunch going on. Um, just to share some, some activity from um, <clears throat> DICE that happened last week. So IIW Europe occurred last week. And uh, as in kicking that off, a bunch of cryptographers, including Jan Kamenisch and and um, uh, a whole bunch of names you'll probably recognize, posted a request. Um, uh, posted a comment about the EU plans for using SD Jots, and and basically said you're not going to get unlinkability with that. Um, 
or sorry, batch issuance of of SD jots and and basically said that's not a not an ideal approach and doesn't give you is likely not to give you unlinkability. So you should really use BBS is the bottom line of their um, note. So we really, you know, I think there's a bunch of things going to happen with BBS. So um, I would like to figure out where a good library is and 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 go to that. So you know, switching to another implementation or perhaps moving it to outside of, of Akapai with another implementation. Um, but at this moment, it's not clear which one to switch to. I think that's going to clarify, but right now we don't know. So, okay. Um, so just to, as a quick clarification, uh, the specific implementation of BBS within Akapai is not necessarily the same as other implementations of BBS. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. So just because we kept around the current implementation doesn't mean that we're going to be able to interoperate with the new and improved BBS stuff exactly. and all those conversations going on going forward. Exactly. Which is why it maybe it's it's better to defer. Um, you know, that becomes, is this the option? Yeah. Right. Now I recall this whole conversation yeah it, it it might be maybe it's a little draconian but it almost feels like maybe we should just remove it and then if somebody complains about it being gone then we go through the trouble of creating a plugin yeah and and reintroducing it that way um, yeah because it, it seems just... like there's there's questionable value to it persisting unless somebody really really wants it Can we simply drop the dependency, like where we're including it, and everything would still work as long as you don't call the code? So basically, comment it out kind of thing, or yeah. So keep I know the code there's, just... a place, there's a place in the um, in the Docker file stuff where we say, you know, uh, requirements dot py for lack of a better you know requ requirements dot i don't know what it is um right. file where it says askar and bbs so if we just dropped bbs from that would um, e everything still work unless you try to use bbs so there's we, we've this is probably one of the things that we struggle the most with making sure is consistent across some of our releases is making sure yeah. that not including all of the extras that things still behave as expected. Yeah. Um, so we, we'd probably just have to test and see. Um, but in theory, I think it should be um, set up in such a way that if the dependency is absent, it just disables that functionality. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, it's not in here, right? We should see the it, it is further down. Yeah, it okay. should be listed as an optional dependency inside of this pi project. There That's we go. When we install yeah. it elsewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, and then in our Docker files, if I remember correctly, We see a, a yeah. There's a requirements dot text that oops doesn't have it. Um. Oh well, I guess I'm I'm just wandering around here. I guess I don't know what I'm doing enough. I oh, think you're on. I think you're on the right track though, in the sense that if we just dropped it as one of the extras that gets installed in the Docker container, yeah, then yeah, I right here. This is what I was thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. So if we just drop it here and tell everyone, if you want it, put it back in, but you can't use ARM. Is that all we have to do? Would it be appropriate for us to mark it for deprecation as well and schedule it for removal at some point in the future? Okay. Think about BBS? Yeah. 
or at least this particular iteration of BVS. Exactly. What I was about to say is exactly that, that, that the current library being used is not being maintained. Listen, uh, I think I'm all in favor, and I think we, we should just use ED25519 Signature 2020 and kill all the rest. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, well, because there, there's BBS and, and the uh, ED, EDDSA signature in there, and both have the 2018 and 2020 version. So I would just keep the EDDSA and the latest version. Oh, I see. So does any well, from the does JSON anybody... LD stuff, you would drop BBS entirely. Why isn't that what we're saying here? No, um, I think what we're saying is that in what we're releasing and testing, we're not actually going to include the BBS. But if you need that support, um, oh, yeah, make it a plugin, just sure. put it back in. But we're yeah. not going to do that work for you. All we're going to do is remove this comma BBS from here. Now we support ARM fully so we don't get into any messes with with that and if you really want to support it stick it back in i mean yeah and and you don't and and be aware that you can't use you have to use the compatibility could i could i maybe volunteer to be assigned to this and i'll actually work on this but yes i don't think i'm assigned to it so oh, i have i, I have it not okay. for this one but um, okay. I have an M1 Mac and I can work on testing the cell. Yep. Okay. I, I think we need to get rid of it sooner than later. Yeah. And if it might be, if, if it's not a lot of work, I can investigate how much effort it would be to pull this into a plugin instead. Yep. So we're not keeping uh, unsupported code. Okay. All right. Um, you have. the task of reviewing this and saying, here's the, here's the right thing to do. Sound good? Yeah. Excellent. All right. And with that, we are at time. Thanks all. Uh, we'll see you in another couple of weeks. And, um, Recording will be posted, and we'll go from there. Thanks, all. See ya. Thanks. Have a good day, everyone.